In this video, we'll talk about how to interface a microcontroller with seven segment displays. Seven segment displays are commonly used in a lot of different digital systems. So scoreboards can use these seven segment displays to indicate the score of the home team and the away team. Uh, alarm clocks often use this to tell you what time it is or what time your alarm is set for. You might have several other appliances in your home that use seven segment displays. Microwaves pretty typically use seven segment displays. You may have them on washing machines if you have a digital display telling you how much longer you have in a wash cycle. Uh, if you have a digital display on your oven or stove, it might indicate things like the temperature or you can set a timer, all those different types of things. And so they're called seven segment displays because they actually use seven segments made out of LEDs and you can light up each of those segments or turn them off and they are used to form the digits that you see here, zero through nine. So here are some commonly used uh, applications of seven segment displays. You can see an old Casio watch up here in the top right. You can see the display on a microwave down here in the bottom left. And hopefully you remember from the Back to the Future movie series, this is what Michael J. Fox used to display uh, what the current time was and his destination when he was doing time travel. And as you can see over here in the top left, this is what the digits look like with the segments lit up. This is the typical configuration. In some cases, some people will display sixes without this segment on the top lit up, or nines likewise without the segment on the bottom lit up as you see over here in the Back to the Future display. So there is a slight variation, just like there's a variation in fonts. Um, some fonts are serifed, some are sans serifed. Same thing with uh, seven segment displays. You just have to agree to a convention. So when you display a nine, should this bottom segment be lit up or not? So long as you're consistent, it doesn't really matter. So on the QL200 trainer kit, which we'll be using in this class, we will be using two of the ports that are on the PIC microcontroller, port D and port A. And these serve two different functions, but they're both imperative to be able to send information to the seven segment displays. If you look at the QL200 trainer kit that we're using in class, you will note that you have six different seven segment displays. And port D is used to determine which of the segments should be on or off and port A is used to turn on each of the digits individually. Now, you will note that only one digit is turned on at a time, and this is so that we can save ports. So, if you think about being able to use six different digits all simultaneously, and each of those digits having a seven segment display and a decimal point, really you have eight different segments to light up, and you'd have six different uh, displays with eight segments, that would require 48 um, pins on your microcontroller if you were to directly wire each of them to the seven segment display. And as you may be well aware, we only have a 40 pin microcontroller. So in order to save pins, what we're going to do is only turn on one digit at a time. And you may think, well, that's not very useful. How am I going to use all six? Well, what you will do is you will very quickly turn on one of the displays and then turn it back off. And so we will rely on persistence of vision in order to allow us to quickly go from one number to the next number to the next number as we turn on the displays in sequence. And to the naked eye, you won't notice that we aren't leaving one of the displays on the whole time. What you may notice is that the displays appear a little bit dimmer. Uh, they may not be quite as bright if you're using all six of the digits, but that will be largely due to the delay of cycling through all of the numbers on the trainer kit. So let's talk about how you set up these different values. Port D determines which of the segments in the display you're currently talking to should be on. And the logic is actually a little bit backwards from what you might anticipate. In order to get this to work, you put a zero for the segments that you want on, and you put a one for the segments you want off. And the order of bits in port D is very important. Um, the first bit, the most significant bit, bit seven, is for the decimal point. And for most things that we'll do in this class, we will just leave that decimal point off. And then you can see on the right, this is pretty standard notation for what the segments 
names are. So this is segment A up here at the top, B here, C, D, E, and F, just going all the way around the perimeter clockwise. And then G is this center crossbar. And the segments are all in reverse order as you go through here. So bit 0 corresponds to A, bit 1 corresponds to B, C corresponds to bit 2, D to bit 3, etc. So if you wanted to turn on the number 0, you would want all of the LEDs in this perimeter on. So we have all six of these segments on. That would put zeros all here on the lower six bits. But then G would be off. So we're putting a 1 there, and then we wouldn't want the decimal point on. So we would put a 1 there. So 1, 1, 0, 0. 0, 0, 0, 0 would allow us to have a 0 displayed if we turned on that particular segment. What would we do if we wanted to display three? So you might pause the video, think about that. Okay, and we're back. And so let's check our work. If we wanted three to be displayed, would we want the decimal point? No. Is G part of three? Yes. So that should be a zero. So the decimal point should be a one. Then the G should be a zero. Is F on? not for three so that should be a one is e on for three no so that should be a one and then you should notice that a b c and d are all on to make a three so all of these would be zero so you would have zeros for a b c and d and then also a zero for g so that would be one zero one one zero 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 or if you were to convert that over to hexadecimal that would be B zero splitting the nibbles into two hexadecimal digits in the code that we will write to activate these displays we are going to be using lookup tables and these lookup tables will be part of a subroutine and what we will do is we will put a value into our W register and then we will go and offset inside of that lookup table and we will do use the return literal with W to return the appropriate literal value that will correspond to turning on whichever value we are interested in on the display and the values for each digit are based on the positions of the segments and so just like what we saw on the previous um, slide there is a specific code that we can develop for all of digits 0 through 9. So in class, you will actually work on developing that table, and you will use that in the lab this week. There is some sample code posted on Blackboard for the QL200, and this code will write the digits 0 through 5 to the 6, 7 segment displays. And there's a separate video that you can follow that allows us to examine how that code works. So I will be posting a separate video, look for that shortly.